All right, the last thing I want to talk with you about uh, with the binomial probability distribution uh, is the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, there's a special way uh, to calculate this, uh, which uh, I think with a little bit of reasoning is uh, kind of intuitive. So let's take a look at this. Uh, so for a binomial random variable, uh, the mean mu is always n times p. So n is the number of events, p is the probability. Uh, so if you think of p being flipping a coin, two-headed coins, head and, head and tail, probability of getting heads would be uh, 1 out of 2. So if you flip a coin 10 times, your n is 10, your p is 0.5, you would expect to get heads 5 times. So your mean is 5. Uh, with rolling a die, if you want to roll a 5, you roll a die, if you roll the die 6 times, that'd be 6 times 1 6, you would have, on average, 1 5. Uh, here with our example, let me get this tool here. Uh, your mean, if I can get it to show up, would be 6 times me, 7, because you're rolling the die 7 times, times 1, 6, which would equal about 1.17, we can say. So uh, you have, a, you're, you're expecting slightly more than 1, 5 when you roll a die 7 times. Uh, the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. So here you're looking at a standard deviation of the square root of uh, 7 trials times 1, 6 times 5, 6. So that would be about 0 0.9860. Zero. So your standard deviation is just a little bit below 1. All right, I want to throw one curveball question to close up shop with this video series on prob binomial probability. Uh, and that is, let's go back to our example. Instead of rolling a 5 uh, two times or less, let's say we wanted to roll a 5 two times or more. Let's see if I can get the tool I need. So two times, I can get the show, or more. So we're looking at the probability of x being, let's say, two times or more. Two or more would be the same as more than one. So this is the same as the probability of two plus the probability of three plus the probability of four plus the probability of five plus the probability of 6. Uh, again, this is a little cumbersome to type in. Uh, so what we are able to do is take the complement. So this would be the same as 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 1. I do need my equal to line, so I gotta add that, 
after the fact. So we can take the complement. Uh, another, another time when the complement rule comes in handy. So I'm going to turn on my calculator here, clear out the old stuff, uh, go to my distros. Once again, I'm going to need this fella. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to go ahead and type in 1 minus distro binome CDF. Still rolling the die seven times. Likelihood of a success each time is still one out of six. Uh, and I'm now looking at one or less. So I'll do a comma one. Hit enter and get about 33%. So uh, this is a point, this is a, the kind of question I, I love to assign on a test, see if I can throw students up. Because the mistake that a lot of students make is uh, when the question asks for or more, they don't take the complement or they use the wrong x value. Our x value is now actually 1 and not 2 uh, because uh, binome CDF in the calculator uh, always does uh, less than and equal to. So if you want more than, you have to adjust your x uh, accordingly. And that is uh, what I find uh, my students struggling with the most is uh, making adjustments for x uh, when you're talking about less than or greater than because when you use the binome CDF function uh, in your calculator it's always less than and equal to. So you gotta make adjustments accordingly.